Hi everyone, welcome to the classroom again. I'm Laura Nouns and I'm real excited today to be able to share with you one of my very favorite quilt blocks called the Sawtooth Star. The star here has units in it that we refer to as flying geese. This is it right here and I'm just going to move it around so you can see that there are four of these flying geese units in each one of the blocks. There's lots of ways to make these flying geese units, but I'm going to show you one that's been real popular. You start with one square that will be used for the background and four smaller squares that will be your star points. Always remember to refer to the PDF because that will give you the exact measurements for cutting. Notice that I have marked a diagonal line on the wrong side of each of the smaller squares. And this is how it works. So you take the small squares and place them so you have right sides together. So the background fabric is right side facing up, the small squares right side facing down. Make sure that your edges are nice and even all the way around. You don't want anything sticking out. And then go ahead and pin these so they're nice and secure. You don't want anything slipping because this is you know, it's always the details that help with the success of your, of your block, all right? And since you're making four of these, you can prepare all four of them and then chain them right through the sewing machine. So I've got one over here that um, you're going to stitch on both sides. So both sides of that marked line a quarter of an inch away. So you can stitch all the way down, all four, and then turn around and come a quarter of an inch on the other side. Again, I've used black thread just to help clarify the stitching lines for you. And then once you've stitched these, cut the chain of thread joining the units, and then use your rotary cutter and your ruler to cut exactly on that diagonal line. So now you have two units. Let's go back over to the pressing board. Remember, always flat. Flat, flat on the wrong side. It helps to set those stitches. It will just allow you to get a much sharper crease on the right side. Okay. Like this and like this. Okay, All the way down. And let's do the same thing over here. One more. Okay, Flat and over the stitching line. Nice and sharp. Now remember, we have two remaining small squares that have their diagonal lines marked on them already. Place those onto the units, just like this. Okay. And you're going to repeat the process by stitching a quarter of an inch away from your marked line on both sides. So I've got one over here, just like this. Okay. And let's go ahead and take the pins out, take the ruler and the cutter, and let me just point something out here for you, because this is real important. Whenever you're working with triangles, there always seems to be a question as to where to start and where to stop. And I want you to look closely here and see where this stitching line begins. It's exactly at the, at the corner where these two meet. So right here is where it should start and right here is where it should end. Back over to the pressing board. Flat on the wrong side. Turn and press on the right side. And you really want to do a pressing here, not the ironing motion, because otherwise you're going to distort this whole unit. Okay, let's put this right up here like this. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to take my ruler. And here's another one of those checkpoints. I want this unit to measure 2 by 3 and a half. So half of the 3 and a half inch width is 1 and 3 quarters. So if I place that 1 and 3 quarter inch marking on my ruler, right over, I shouldn't say over, I should say right into that point. 
and then I'm going to turn it around and cut it in this direction. And if there's anything sticking out, I want you to cut it off. All right. All right. Let's see how I've got here. Some of you may be using other rulers, and that's perfectly fine. You can do the same thing with this one. I'm working at three and a half inches wide, two and a half inches deep. Check it out. Take a few minutes here. Here's another checkpoint. Does the one quarter inch mark hit? where these two gray pieces meet, right up here at the peak of the flying geese. All right, go ahead and cut those little tips off. So now you're going to have your completed flying geese unit. Now that you've made your flying geese, it's time to put your block together. So I've got a little flannel board here. It's just a piece of cardboard that's covered with either a piece of batting or flannel. And it's really helpful when you can uh, for putting all of your pieces out in the right order, ready for sewing. So I want you to notice how everything is laid out. I'll tell you, if anything goes wrong with this one, it's usually this. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've seen that in the classroom. So before you start sewing, I want you to just check it. Take a look and make sure all of those star points are facing out. I'm going to flip this in the direction that you would be sewing because it's so much easier to work from the right to the left. So I'm going to take all of these units on this side and flip them. Flip them, flip them. So when I say flip them, I mean I want these to be lined up all the way down. And then I'm going to take a few pins and secure them like this. Okay. I'm not going to pick them up because I've got another one ready to go so I can show you. But the important thing to note here is this side. What happens when you start stitching along the edge of these units, there's an intersection right here. So two stitching lines meet right at this point. When you're stitching along, I want you to be very aware of that point and stay just a touch, just a touch to the outside, all right? Because if you are too close to it or you come beyond it, you're going to lose those star points when the whole block is constructed. So you go ahead and you stitch all the way down, do your little chaining in between the units, and then after you've stitched that, you can simply flip it around and repeat the whole process. So you always want to stitch with the back side of the flying geese unit on the top side, so you can see that intersection. Okay, I've got one here that's been stitched, and you can see how it works. Notice how everything is neatly folded into the center. This makes it real convenient for the next step. Let's go over to the pressing board. Okay. Let's see how it's folded in on itself. Go ahead and press it. Nice and flat on the wrong side. Flat, 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 all the way down. Okay. And now this one, we want the, the seams to press in opposite directions so that you eliminate all that bulk at the intersection. So if you'll just remember that all of the seams press in the direction of the squares. So where are the squares? The two outer rows, the squares are in the corners. So these seams press out. Now in the, in, the inner row, the square is in the middle. So that means that these seams press in. So it's out, in, and out again. Okay, just like this. All right, flat, flat, flat. So take your time with this. And again, checkpoint, make sure are those star points going in the direction that they need to be? If not, now's the time to fix it. All right. And then the final step, let me flip it around, is this way. See, because you've chained these, they're already attached. And so there's less chance of getting these out of order. Go ahead and feel at the intersections that those, those seams are flat, pressed in opposite directions. Go ahead and pin, and then you're going to stitch all the way down on one side. Do the same thing on the opposite side, pinning and stitching, staying just shy of the intersection of those stitching lines 
And I have a final one over here. Let me show you. That has been stitched. So I'm going to give it just a final press on the wrong side. And then these last two seams I press into the center of the square. Just like so. Once it's pressed, I want to point out one last important thing. Because if this is your first time making this block, at first glance it looks like you really goofed. <laughs> because I think most of us expect that those star points are going to touch the outer edge of the block, right out here. And they won't. They're going to be in a quarter of an inch. And that is because when this joins to the next block, you're right there on point. All right. So watch for that. Watch for quarter inches around the outer edge. The final checkpoint, take your ruler. It should measure six and a half inches square. Go ahead and put your ruler on there. If there's anything extending beyond, you go ahead and trim it off. Use the lines on your ruler to make sure that you're square and everything is nice and straight. And just be careful. Be careful that you don't come in too far. So anyway, have fun with this. It's a great little block. There are wonderful lessons in here. And I'll hope to see you next time in the classroom.